today I'm going to be reviewing the eBay one gallon water distiller. I'm also going to distill a variety of water sources. Tap water, bucket water filter. And filtered water purchased from a water store. You'll be surprised of what is left in the pot after the distillation. Or at least I was surprised. So let's find out how it works and how good it is. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at the unit itself. I bought it on eBay a while back for around $60. Before I purchased this, I was thinking of making one myself out of a pressure cooker. But the cost of the pressure cooker alone is already more than the eBay water distiller system. Not to mention you have to get other materials and the time you invest in it to make it. So making the water distiller myself does not make economical sense at this point. Now let's take a look at the pressure cooker. It is advertised to have all stainless steel internal. So let's take a look here. The pot is stainless steel. The cap is stainless steel. The coil is also stainless steel and even the spout is also stainless steel. So everything that's in contact with water is stainless steel except this silicone gasket here on the cap. And this gasket does very good job at sealing the unit and keep the water vapor inside it. And uh, to seal the unit, all you have to do is to put the top down and that's it. It's held together only by gravity. So the way it works is it will boil the water and the vapor will rise and will get into the coil on the top of the unit. The coil also has heat sinks that help cool down the water. The fan blows air upward and it draws air from the vent on the side through the coil and out at the top. By the time the water vapor gets to the top of the coil, it will cool down and condense back into liquid and drip down the spout down here. The pot has a marking that says full. When water is filled up to this line, it is exactly one gallon. And you don't want to fill it more than this line because when heated up, water will expand and when it boils, it will produce bubble and therefore occupy even more space. So uh, there will be too much pressure and will spill over. The unit comes with a cleaning agent called detergent. But this is no ordinary soap. Soap will not help you clean out the residue on the pot at the end of distillation. Only acid can remove this kind of residue because it's mostly salts of calcium and sodium. And if you're unlucky, it might also have salts of other heavy metals like arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury. The detergent bottle does not say what chemical it is, but by the look of the crystals and the way it works, I think it is citric acid. I also tried vinegar to clean out the residue and it works as well as the citric acid. The unit also comes with a one gallon plastic container. But after collecting my first batch of uh, distilled water, the water tastes really bad. It has a strong plastic taste to it. So I empty the bottle and smell the inside of it. And it smells like used engine oil. The smell is really strong. So this bottle actually alters the taste and smell of the distillate. So I go ahead and use a different water bottle to collect my distillate. This is just a regular one gallon bottle from Arrowhead. It's made for containing drinking water, so it's perfect for this. The height of the bottle is just right at the spout of the distiller. So I drill a hole and push the spout through and that's it, it's just perfect. After I change the collecting bottle, the taste of the distilled water is really good and there's no more weird smell or taste. The water that comes out of the spout here, surprisingly, is not even hot at all. Let me collect some so I can measure the temperature. Twenty-seven point eight degrees Celsius. Now it's time to make some distilled water. My first batch, I use tap water. I fill the water up to the full level and let it run all by itself. 
It takes about four hours to completely distill one gallon, and it runs extremely efficient. I'm able to get almost one gallon of distilled water out of one gallon of tap water. That's almost 100% recovery, and that's very impressive. The unit has a heat sensor, and when it runs out of water inside the pot, the temperature inside will rise, and the heat sensor will turn off the unit automatically. You don't have to sit around, wait, and watch until the end to turn off the unit. It does everything automatically and will turn off all by itself. However, it will let the pot run dry and the residue will be hard to clean. So what I do is I just distill a, just a little bit less than a gallon so that I still have some water left in the pot. That way the remaining water will still dissolve the residue and make my cleaning job a little bit easier. For my first batch using tap water, I intentionally let the unit run all the way to the end and let it turn itself off automatically. I just want to make sure it works properly because it's my first time using it. And I'm also curious to see what has been lurking inside my tap water. And here's the residue from the tap water. It doesn't look good. I can't imagine drinking a liquid that contains all this. Now it's time to clean it up. The residue on the bottom of the pot is hard as rock. I thought it would be hard to clean, but with the citric acid, it would just dissolve the solid right away. And surprisingly, it was pretty easy to clean, even though the residue was stuck really hard to the pot. For my second batch, I used filtered water, which is filtered by a carbon filter under the sink. And this time, I leave a little bit of water left in the pot with the residue to make my cleaning job a little bit easier. The residue is a bit less than tap water partly because it has already been through the carbon filter. For my third batch, I use the water that has been through two filtering steps. The water first goes through my kitchen sink filter and then is filtered one more time by my bulky water filter system. The end result is a residue that is even a little bit cleaner than the previous batch with just one filter. However, both filtering systems did not remove all the salts in the water, so there's still a lot of salts and residue left. For my final test, I used water purchased from a water store, and the end result is very surprising. This is what is left after the distillation process. The residue is just pure and clear water. There are absolutely no salts in the residue. There are no salts sticking on the bottom of the pot. And unlike the previous distillation trials, this time there are no white powder sticking on the side of the pot either. It's all just clear water. So this is like distilling distilled water. I did a little research and found out the water I bought from that particular store was through a reverse osmosis system which would produce the purest drinking water possible besides distillation, that is. During the four trials, I also used a TDS meter to measure and compare the quality of the distilled water. TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solid, and it measures the charged ions in water as impurity and other salts in parts per million. The original tap water was about 300 parts per million. The distilled water after the distillation process was almost zero parts per million, especially the water I distilled that was originally from the water store. It had one part per million. There's a couple things I don't like about this distiller. First, the fans run really loud. The air that's being blown upward by the fan is quite warm, about 42 degrees Celsius. So you don't want to put this under the kitchen cabinet as it will get hot. The upside is that because it blows strong hot air, you can just put it in your room and make it a space heater and warm up your room. That's if you can put up with the amount of crazy noise this thing makes. Another downside is it can only distill one gallon at a time. And finally, of course, being an electric distiller, it will not run when you have a power outage, which is usually when you need it the most. But this shouldn't be a problem if you have an off-grid backup solar power system. The power it uses is about 700 watts from the very beginning all the way up to the end. And it takes about 4 hours to finish. 
So in total, it uses about 3 kilowatt of power. To save time and to save on energy bill, I try to preheat the water before I put it in the pot. And it saves me about half an hour of runtime and about a quarter of kilowatt hour of energy. So this way I can complete the distillation in about three and a half hours instead of four hours. So overall, this is an excellent water distiller. The distilled water tastes really good, even better than the reverse osmosis water I purchased from the water store. Next video, I'll do a tear down of this distiller and I'll show you what's inside and how it works. And that's all for now. I'll see you later.